Hey there, I'm Jensen. Now, COVID-19 is surging across the country, including right here in Northwest Ohio, and medical professionals are largely blaming the Delta variant. But what is so different about Delta, and are there any other variants we should be concerned about? I have all the information you need to know to get in the loop. First, it's important to keep in mind that viruses constantly change through mutation. And a variant has one or more mutations that separate it from whatever other variants are running around. As expected, multiple variants of SARS-CoV-2 have been identified here in the U.S. and around the world throughout the pandemic. Now let's take a look at the current variants of concern. So according to the CDC, a variant of concern is, quote, a variant for which there is evidence of an increase in transmissibility, more severe disease, significant reduction in neutralization by antibodies generated during previous infection or vaccination, reduced effectiveness of treatments or vaccines, or diagnostic detection failures. So with that in mind, right now there are four in the U.S. Alpha, Beta, Delta, and Gamma. But Delta has dominated the conversation because it's now the most dominant strain of the virus. So what's the deal with Delta? What are the Delta Ds? Well, let's take a look at what the CDC has to say. First, the Delta variant is more contagious. In fact, it's been found to be more than two times as contagious as previous variants. Next, some data suggests that the Delta variant might cause more severe illness than previous strains in unvaccinated people. In two different studies from Canada and Scotland, patients infected with the Delta variant were more likely to be hospitalized than patients infected with Alpha or the original virus strains. And right now, people who are unvaccinated are the greatest concern. The CDC says the greatest risk of transmission is among unvaccinated people who are much more likely to contract and therefore transmit the virus. But fully vaccinated people with Delta variant breakthrough infections can spread the virus to others. And what makes Delta unique from previous variants is that experts believe it produces the same high amount of virus in both unvaccinated and fully vaccinated people. But the difference here is that vaccinated people seem to be infectious for a shorter period of time. Okay, but are Delta variant symptoms any different than original COVID-19 symptoms? Well, there is a slight difference in symptoms commonly linked to the Delta variant. Dr. Gabe Callen, professor and chair at Johns Hopkins University's Department of Emergency Medicine, described the difference in symptoms between the Delta variant and original COVID-19 strain as nuanced changes. So cough, loss of smell, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea are less common with the Delta variant, but they're still being reported in smaller numbers. Now, the most common symptoms of the Delta variant include sore throat, runny nose, headache, and fever. So how do we fight off the Delta variant? Right now, doctors like Dr. Kellen say the best defense against Delta is the vaccine. And just recently, the FDA cleared some people to get a third dose of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Now, those people include people with cancer, organ transplants, or other conditions that weaken their immune systems. Boosters for others might come later if the Delta variant ends up showing more resistance to the standard two doses. But right now, both vaccines continue to show strong protection against severe illness and death. And guidance for masks has changed in the last month due to Delta's transmissibility. For areas with substantial to high transmission, masks are suggested for everyone, regardless of vaccination status. And right now, that includes us here in Northwest Ohio. But there is a bright spot locally. According to Toledo Lucas County Health Commissioner Eric Jaginski, vaccinations are up here in Lucas County. Three, four, five weeks ago, we were in the mid 200s, 260, 270 for vaccinations every week. Uh, over the last three weeks, we've had an uptick. And now what we're seeing is we're seeing well over 500 individuals this past week get vaccinated. But that's all I have for you today. If you liked this video, hit that like button. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you're in the loop.